Christopher John Lewis attempted to murder the Queen with a .22 rifle in Dunedin. He missed, but two years later tried to kill Charles when he returned with Diana. Police did not charge Teen with treason as case was politically too hot to handle. Former Dunedin police officer Tom Lewis said then Prime Minister Robert Muldoon feared the royals would not return to New Zealand if word got out. A new report reveals how the government of New Zealand attempted to conceal just how close a young man came to assassinating the Queen during a diplomatic trip to the country in 1981. As the Queen paraded in front of adoring crowds Christopher John Lewis, a 17-year-old local boy from Dunedin, took aim with a .22 rifle. The Queen had stepped out of a Rolls Royce to greet 3,500 well-wishers when the deafening crack rang out across the crowd. The shot flew past her head Lewis had missed and aside from a brief moment of distraction the parade continued, the crowd unaware of what had just almost occurred. The young man from the nation's South Island had become obsessed with exterminating the royal family and, worryingly, the self-styled terrorist had come incredibly close to killing the British head of state. In the aftermath shamed New Zealand police launched a cover-up operation to disguise the seriousness of the event, a new investigation reveals. According to a former Dunedin police officer, Tom Lewis, who worked on the 1981 case, Police tried to play down with the attack. You will never get a true file on that it was reactivated, regurgitated, bits pulled off it, other false bits put on, he said. Tom Lewis said then Prime Minister Robert Muldoon feared the royals would not return to New Zealand if word got out about just how close the rogue teenager had come to killing the Queen, reports Hamish McNeely for the website The Stuff. He the teenager's original statement was later destroyed in an official cover-up. Marie Hayman, the would-be killer's former lawyer, said police decided not to charge the young man with treason, which in 1981 carried the death penalty, because they had received an order from up top. They believed it would draw undue attention to the event and cause deep embarrassment. He said, the fact an attempted assassination of the Queen had taken place in New Zealand. It was too politically hot to handle I think the government took the view that he is a bit nutty and has had a hard upbringing, so it won't be too harsh. Lewis later claimed in a draft autobiography, entitled Last Words that he had been visited by top brass from Wellington during the interrogation process who told him never to speak about the event. In the manuscript he sent to U.S. publishers Howling at the Moon Productions he described how police threatened him. If I was ever to mention the events surrounding my interviews of the organization, they would make sure I suffered a fate worse than death, he wrote. Lewis's charge was later downgraded to possession of a firearm in a public place and discharging it. However, questions were asked of police at the time. In the hours after the shooting officers were questioned over what had occurred, they told press the distinctive noise was just a council sign falling over. Later, under questioning, another narrative emerged. They said someone had let off a firecracker nearby. Christopher Lewis was interviewed eight times by police after the incident. The young man said he had been ordered to kill the Queen by an Englishman known as the Snowman of who he was immensely scared. The Snowman had told Lewis about far-right groups in Britain like the National Front and said he could take refuge in similar groups in New Zealand. Two years later the same teenager attempted to overpower a guard and escape from a psychiatric ward where he was being held in order to murder Prince Charles, who was visiting T.H.